Hello everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an absolutely fantastic day at the moment. Ledger is having a 10% off sale on their Ledger Family Pack X, their Ledger Family Pack S Plus, and their Ledger Backup Pack as well. While I do not work for Ledger, I am an affiliate and I do have an affiliate link in the description below. This offer is for people who wish to protect their cryptocurrencies and without any further ado uh, let's jump right into it we have a lot to cover <clears throat> once again in a 24-hour uh, window the cryptocurrency space has nearly completely lost their mind. Uh, it has been announced that we might be potentially on the cusp of E, uh, Bitcoin ETF approval. If you are just waking up and looking at prices, I'm pretty sure you have noticed that, you know, things have moved up quite significantly since you closed your eyes. <clears throat> A top Bloomberg ETF analyst has apparently released information that there is now a window that is open that could allow the U.S. SEC to approve a spot Bitcoin ETF. The idea is and has been for the last couple of weeks, for those of you who weren't here, welcome back, is that the SEC is basically going to approve a Bitcoin ETF in the very near future. Depending on which analyst that you've been listening to or getting your news from, the time frame is actually between November, December, and January. I know that's a bit of a wide stretch, but it's where people are kind of throwing their chips and seeing where they land in that. <clears throat> people have heard rumors, or apparently there's a lot of speculation from insiders we don't know who are saying that January is basically like the cutoff date as far as like there will be one in January. However, there's apparently a window that's open right now that gives us a good, I think, eight days where it looks very likely that the US SEC is going to approve a spot Bitcoin ETF. And as you might have imagined, this has caused people's imaginations to completely go wild. A top Bloomberg ETF analyst are growing more confident at the potential of having a spot Bitcoin ETF approved by January. According to a Twitter post by James Seyfart, it is S-E-Y-F-F-A-R-T, as complimented by Eric Balchunas, there is a 90% chance of having the U.S. SEC <coughs> approve numerous spot Bitcoin ETF applications on its desk by the 10th of January. There is also a potential that the approval would come earlier. The idea still is from a lot of people, former workers at the SEC, the other guy who launched a lawsuit against Ripple back in 2020, is that if the US SEC does approve a Bitcoin ETF, that there will be multiple at the exact same time. What we've heard, at least the speculation is, that they would do so in an effort to not have a, 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 a first runner, first winner, first mover advantage. If you allow one company to have it, they're going to get all the monies. If you allow seven, it creates some kind of competition within the market where, you, you know, investors have a chance to choose from multiple different ones. Burst on burst based on his recent uh, permutation, Safart says the likelihood of having a huge influx of approvals from the SEC at the same time. He shared a screenshot of a report titled "Bitcoin ETFs Approval Opportunity." Yada yada yada. Per the screenshot, the window is scheduled to open on the 9th of November. That's today, during which the SEC might approve. Oh, geez might approve all 12 Bitcoin ETF applications they are currently reviewing. These include Grayscale's GBTC, uh, which was recently cleared for consideration by a federal court, which we're also going to get into as well. A lot of people, I think, missed that news. The, the most popular of the news today, of course, is that we are now in this window where the SEC, and this is this is even more of a, if you paid attention, this is something that we heard about, I think, the end of September, early October, is that this was actually the time frame where a lot of other analysts were like, this is this is the window. 
This is when it's going to happen. And we are we have stepped foot inside of it, so to say. So the most popular news right now is that we are here. We are in the time frame where we might be seeing a, a Bitcoin ETF approved. The news that a lot of other people missed and that I I personally <clears throat> think has a little bit more a little bit more weight to it. For those of you who uh, were not here before or have not been here the last couple of years or simply just forgot, what have you, uh, there's a company called Grayscale. And Grayscale has a Bitcoin fund, which in everything but the letters ETF is basically an ETF, but it's called a fund. So the issue is, actually, I believe it's a trust fund, actually. Like, anyway, the uh, point is, is that... As they don't have the letters ETF, they have applied with the SEC to convert their fund into a Bitcoin ETF. However, the SEC said no. The people from Grayscale were like, stop it. And they basically took the SEC to court and Grayscale won. What Grayscale won is that the SEC has to uh, re-review their application because apparently from what we've been hearing from industry insiders is that nothing is wrong with their ETF application, it basically all comes down to the US SEC playing hardball for over a decade at this point. <clears throat> the interesting part is that we now have news that not only is the SEC re-reviewing their application, they're actually in talks with them. Like they're closed door conversations between them to try and smooth this all out to get it going. Grayscale was for a very long time kind of the a lot of people believed that they would be the first to have a physical Bitcoin ETF. And the fact that there are now actual discussions happening, because the way that we have understood it after having gone over this for years and years and years, is that people file applications. Apparently, there are some emails, there are some phone calls that end up going through. But now they're actually sitting in a room, closed door, talking to each other about how to actually get this going. So this one, to me, has a little bit more weight to it. As we've, you know, they've been through this before and they can't really go through, that is to say the SEC probably doesn't want to go through another situation again where they say no. Grayscale takes them back to court. They end up losing once again and it's like this, you know, circle that kind of goes on forever and ever. The SEC has apparently open talks <clears throat> with Grayscale Investments over the firm's application to convert their flagship fund into a spot Bitcoin exchange traded fund, according to a report. Grayscale has been in contact with both the SEC's Division of Trading and Markets and the Division of Cooperation Finance. Corporation Finance? Same thing. Following a court ruling that the agency has to re-review the firm's bid for a spot Bitcoin ETF reported on Wednesday, citing a person familiar with the situation. This is also in the news but a lot of people aren't really talking about it the main thing is the window that we have right now from the sec the fact that we're getting and i mean this realistically that we're getting any type of good news at the moment as far as like previously before in the past the sec would have simply shut down any conversation we would have never had any news that there were negotiations negotiations means that like the SEC is slightly willing to do something. And this is currently where we are right now. I think this is also... Yeah. Um, it says, will the SEC eliminate first mover advantage and approve all ETFs? That's a generalized idea. This, did it, this didn't even enter the idea of the cryptocurrency space before. But for some reason now, we're getting this narrative that the SEC and Gary Gensler will approve. The, the number we had before was seven. Seven ETF approvals, and now apparently the number is 12. So, you know, as you might have expected, the entire market has completely lost its mind. The amount of price predictions <clears throat> that have popped up in the last couple of hours are also uh, very intense as well. There is a new theory... I mean, it's not really new. It's more, This is more of like a 2017, 2018 theory or narrative that's popping back up is that not only will the cryptocurrency market surge, but the surge will be dominated by three coins. If you've been here for a while, I'm pretty sure you can guess what they are. 
It says a 300% crypto surge is incoming. Bitcoin, <clears throat> Ethereum, and XRP prices to explode. The amount of... <clears throat> Price predictions for these coins. Yes, I'm still a little sick. I'm getting better. Thank you for those who write nice comments and not like in, in the comment section. The numbers for Bitcoin range quite wildly, widely, weirdly, in that the lower end of the bull run spec the lower end of the bull run speculation is pricing in a $120 to a $130,000 Bitcoin. The mid-range, where a lot of people think the prices are going to go just because of generalized mania, <clears throat> because of the having, because of uh, you name it. There's like 18 different things, all the ETFs at the exact same time, is around a $230,000 to a $250,000 Bitcoin. This is where I personally believe things are going to go. I think we're going to get over 220 dollars 230 dollars and that's when we'll start hearing like, is this the end? Is, you know, like what's, what, what, what's happening to the prices? The higher end is roughly around the 400,000 plus Bitcoin price. I saw a lot of people or rather some people uh, in the comment section for both channels the last couple of days who were like angry that anyone has proposed a $400,000 Bitcoin. I don't know why numbers make people so angry. <clears throat> if you're in the cryptocurrency space and someone tells you that there's the potential that Bitcoin could go up to 400000 it means you're making money with your altcoins as well. So I don't know where the, the anger comes from that Bitcoin could hit that number. That means instead of it stopping at 200 k it's going to double. That means the more than likely the altcoins you're holding are might going to double and or triple in price. So I didn't really get that. The generalized steam and energy around Ethereum remains consistent. We have not had, in a very surprising way, have not had a lot of Ethereum news. Uh, typically around this time, we start receiving, is it's, it's, it's the, the, the bull run general sentiment. Whenever the market picks back up amongst all coins, we start hearing about updates, upgrades, partnerships, new layers, and all these other things. Ethereum has been relatively quiet every single day. XRP, on the other hand, is in the news nearly every single day. There's the, the Swell Conference, which is currently going on, which is causing XRP's price to rise. You might have seen it in the last couple of days. I think it went up by 11 cents or something like that. About a day or two ago, based off of news that we received, we'll go. There's oh, there's there's way too much to cover, in in one small video. But the generalized idea is that these coins are going to try and lead the entirety of the market, and it seems believable as they've done so before. And the recent surges in XRP that we've seen <clears throat> have also been quite strong and backed by the actual. Like I'm I'm shocked. Like backed by actual news, whenever XRP's price has gone up, it's because like something in the news happened and I'm like, whoa, people are paying attention. I wasn't expecting that because, you know, the last three years, uh, no one was really paying attention. It says crypto markets gain 50 billion overnight as Bitcoin's price explodes to a 18 month high. Yes, you heard that correctly. Bitcoin's price popped up by, I think, over a thousand dollars. Over the course of the evening, just based on the news that this is now the open window, I still, I lightly chuckle at the news that we received about th three or four weeks ago from a number of people that the Bitcoin ETF had already been priced into the market. Like they, be <laughs> they believed that Bitcoin's price may have only gone up to $27,000, $28,000 upon news of, a, of, of an approval. And on speculation, speculation that we might actually get one, we've gone up by nearly $10,000. And this is why, logically, if we get any Bitcoin ETF approval, especially this month, we are going to have a forty-five to a fifty thousand dollar Bitcoin over the course of a seven to eight day period. There's no real discussion anymore. A Bitcoin ETF has not 
been priced into the market. And then you also have to imagine the days after it gets approved, the mania still continues. People will look and go, I didn't get to buy it at 27,000. I didn't get to buy it at 30. I didn't get to buy it at 35,000. It's at 50,000. I better buy now before the price goes up even further. So just overnight, Bitcoin has gone up to an 18-month high. Of course, speculation is all over the place as to where we are going to go over the course of this week and the next week as we have, you know, been doing relatively well. It's very nice to see that the market is moving up. I think we would have normally moved up a smidge by itself just from the news of the halving. But of course, the ETF uh, information is also causing everything to surge. If you weren't here about a couple of weeks ago, there was someone, I believe also from Bloomberg, who said that they expect roughly around, I think, 10 to $15 trillion to enter the market upon a Bitcoin ETF approval. That is the hundreds of millions of people who are into the market flooding it with money. And basically, this is where the $400,000 expectations come from, the the $15 to $20 XRPs, the $10 to $12 to $15,000 Ethereum prices as well. It says, why is the crypto market up today? I think we kind of went over that a little bit. Why did Bitcoin's price soar to $36,800? I believe its price actually went to $37,000 for a brief period. This tends to happen all the time. There's always like a, a scratching of the surface of a price. Prices fall down a tiny bit and then see if they can recover and do that price once again. We rose over $1,000 overnight. This was actually even like the, over the course of an eight-hour period. <clears throat> Just upon news of uh, the potential of there being some type of a, a Bitcoin ETF over the course of this week. A lot of... Websites continue to do this 2023 to 2032 price prediction thing, which I personally don't understand. You know, if you're listening to this and you have a website, it's totally okay to just do like 23, 24, and 25. We don't need 2023 everywhere. It says, will ETH reach $8,000 soon? It seems all but inevitable. I don't think many people are going to disagree or assume that Ether won't <clears throat> less than double its previous all-time high, it was like 4,700. Oh, it's just so annoying. Yeah, I, I, I wake up, I roll out of bed, I make a video, and then of course, like, I'm like, oh, I'm definitely doing so much better today than yesterday, but that's just how things are. Um, I think the crazier numbers for me would be a fifteen to $20,000 Ether. That would be a, a 4 to 5x of its previous all-time high. I think 8,000 is pretty believable, but I think we're also at the point where, similar to years ago, people begin to, I, I can feel like there's always one person who gets really, really frustrated at that, and I, and I know they're out there with their arms crossed. I'm sorry for ruining your day. Have you ever been on a, so, weird story. I was on a train one time. I was on a train one time. I was traveling somewhere, and there was a, there was a woman, I think a couple seats ahead of me. And she was um, sniffling, like just just a nor just a normal sniffle. It was maybe every six or seven minutes. It wasn't every thirty seconds. It was you know quite far and few in between. I could hear this other woman going <sighs> every time she sniffled. This woman got up, went in her purse, and gave the other woman tissues, and was like, "Can you please blow your nose?" And we all looked at her like. Lady, are you okay? Like, it's it's not that it's just a sniffle. Like, this woman wasn't like, I, I was going to say something gross. Anyway, the point is, uh, you know, for the person whose day I'm ruining, I, I apologize. I don't really know exactly what to tell you. I, I think you would probably dislike the sound of me drinking my tea near the microphone far less than anything else. But yeah, the price predictions for Ether continue to roll in as well. It says XRP's price is primed to reach $1 in November. History hints at the possibility of a 70% gain. A lot of people, and this is a little, a little sad in some sort of way. 
A lot of people are looking at the previous price history of XRP to see where things could go in the future. This happens quite often in that people will look at the previous price history of Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, you name it to see where prices could go. But the problem is, is that XRP's price has been suppressed over the course of the last couple of years because of the SEC. <clears throat> and as there's not appropriate, uh, what do you call it? Uh, price numbers from the last bull run where XRP's price was suppressed. People now have to look even further back in time to see where the movement of XRP could go. The fact that we have not already passed by $1 for XRP is one of the most shocking thing. And I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. I mean it. That's not in a joking way. I wholeheartedly assumed this coin would have gotten over a dollar. But you have to also understand that price manipulation it plays a big part in the entirety of this market. If you, as a bank, an institution, or a government who we know are working with Ripple, have any expectation of this coin that you're buying called XRP going to $10 to $15, you might have heard by 2032 a $100, $200 XRP seems believable over the course of a decade. Sure, why not? You as a government institution or bank, you're going to try and make sure that this stays beneath a dollar for as long as possible as you accumulate massive amounts of it. It's the same exact thing with Bitcoin. We get great Bitcoin news all the time. The price didn't move at all for the last two years. I get barely any, barely budge. Same exact thing with Ether and Cardano etc etc uh the news is for some reason that november is going to be great we've had that since the last week of october everyone believes that the price of all these coins are going to go ballistic in november and then we start talking about the santa claus rally which we were also just talking about <clears throat> january is the if it hasn't already been done etf approval time frame then as well T typically historically <clears throat> if we see that a uh, the halving is going to be in April or May, usually by February or March, prices are already kind of surging in anticipation of it. So we are in this digital perfect storm of time where November could have been a little bit more lull. We might have only moved up 5 or 6% this month. But based on the speculation of the ETF, everything is moving a lot higher. Based on the news of what XRP is doing and the companies who are buying it and the uphold and the other thing from Swell and yada, 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 $1 seems basically imminent. I think the larger question that's hanging over everyone's head is when we hit a dollar, when we hit a dollar fifty, and I assume by the time the having is taking place, where, how far can this run? I don't think that XRP is going to go to three dollars and sixty cents and then go, okay, I'm done. I think the energy and the fervor behind all of this is going to be quite dramatic for a lot of people who kind of weren't expecting it, or even the people who are holding XRP. I think a $10 XRP, in my opinion, if we get to a $200,000 Bitcoin, $10 XRP is kind of completely in the cards. I can see an $11, $12 as well. I don't know if we're going to be able to hit a $20, $25 during the course of this run. But to be fair, also people did not see half a cent to $3.60, which I think was like a multi... I think it was... I Hmm... Was it several hundred thousand price increase or something like that? People also didn't see it for Dogecoin, half of a cent to 70 cents. People didn't see it in 2017 for Bitcoin, going from $800 to 20,000. No one knows what the market is going to do. That's kind of the magic of it. The interesting part is just simply being able to uh, figure out how high you think it's going to go and then work off of those numbers. But you got to be realistic about it as well. You can't simply be like $9 million XRP, which is, you know, I, I think is lightly foolish in all of this. It says XRP braces for an imminent watershed moment with a potential 300% surge. I think that would put us to 714.21. That would put us to a $2, $2.10 
XRP. If we end up getting, I'm telling you, if we the the if this is your first uh, merry-go-round in the Bitcoin bull run, uh, eighteen month time span of prices going up during a a market uh, market run, uh, what tends to happen is, and I've noticed this several times, is that a lot of coins will begin to pump, 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 pump in price in anticipation of the having. Cool, got it. We all understand that, but. What you don't really get is the day after the halving has taken place when we start seeing these prices really begin to lose their minds. Your coin will do a multiple from whatever it ended up hitting on that day. That is to say, let's say XRP ends up hitting a dollar and it goes from a dollar and does like a, a strong 10x from that dollar on the day of the halving. The potential for your coin to multiply even more surges if you are already at $2 on that day. The potential for a $20 XRP then becomes even stronger. It's literally about like pumping before the madness begins, the day that the madness happens, and you have 18 months of price movements. And that's where the, the exponential movements can really come in over the course of that time. XRP is prominently, once again, in the news all the time because of the win from the wins from Ripple against the SEC. And now everyone is just basically waiting to see exactly where this coin's price can go. It says Dogecoin rally begins. Will Doge price jump 10x to reach a dollar? Possibly. I, I, I don't see why not. It's more of a when Bitcoin and Ether rise, the rest of the market will rise with them. There doesn't seem to be any type of witchcraft or conundrum inside of that sentence being like, well, I don't know. It seems impossible. We hit 70 cents off of the idea that Elon Musk liked it. It seems believable that it would at least double from its previous all-time high i can see a dollar a dollar and 20 cents a dollar and 40 cents dogecoin hasn't really been in the news as often as it was in years past uh, whenever we do hear about dogecoin news it is typically lightly associated with the idea that twitter is t trying to become an everything payments app and because we know that elon tells us that he likes dogecoin the idea is that it would be integrated into Twitter at some point, and therefore, this is the idea. But besides that, just off of generalized speculation, you'll see. There are going to be many coins not putting Dogecoin into this basket. But there are going to be many coins that are literal garbage, once again, not putting Dogecoin into that basket. But you'll see them surge high in price just off of speculation as to how high these coins can go. So even if we just hit a dollar for Dogecoin, I'd be like, oh, that's it. I was expecting, a, you know, a little bit more of uh, some kind of insanity for the price, you know, because so many people love this coin. Um, also, interestingly in the news, John Deaton, for those of you who aren't on Twitter, is the attorney who continuously talks about the legal case between Ripple and the SEC. And I've noticed recently, you know, so the way that algorithms work now is that if you hover over something for too long, you end up getting shown more of it. So if you've ever noticed on Instagram, as you're scrolling by, if you see something, you look at it for eight seconds too long, you keep scrolling, you'll only see things that are similar to the last thing. I started hovering over people's things to see what they were talking about in the cryptocurrency space more and more recently. And I keep getting John Deaton stuff, and I don't know exactly where it's coming from, but I'm also seeing a lot of people who were or are deeply into other coins beginning to talk more about Bitcoin's price and where Bitcoin's going to go. And I started seeing other stuff as well that John Deaton uh, was talking about the value of Bitcoin and how, as it says on the screen, XRP attorney is predicting Bitcoin's price at half a million dollars. He was basically mirroring or talking similar about uh, Michael Saylor and what's the other woman's name? Mm, I think Kathy Wood. I believe it was Kathy Wood uh, talking about a million dollar price. And he was like, yeah, basically, I think it's going to happen. Bitcoin moving up in price will uh, rise up the rest of the cryptocurrency market and all these other things. And yeah, you know, you, you, you get the generalized idea, but I'm very interested 
to see exactly how high these coins are going to go. There's still there's a lot. You you may feel it. Like you like you may physically feel this in the air. But there's a lot of pent up energy from 2020 and 2021 when the last bull run happened, nothing was really normal. Because of the situation of the world at that point, we should have actually easily gone over a $100,000 Bitcoin, but it was the wrong conditions. Like things were unsettled. We had news about inflation, 10%. The stock market was also inflated. We had like only tech stocks were doing well. People were losing their jobs. You name it, like it was just not, not the right conditions for it. And as we move into this world of 2024, 2025, it seems like all the expectations and all the movements and all the money that was going to go into the market, especially if we have a Bitcoin ETF approval, will then do so starting now, basically, until the next 18 months or so. Um, also heavily in the news, uh, Bitcoins, what do you call it? Um, transaction fees have also begun to rise again. The last couple of days, we've had a, a relatively steady stream about Bitcoin um, NFTs. Since and it's just so fascinating, and I not that I told you it was going to happen, which I did, but it's more of a complete logic thing. Since Bitcoin's price has actually moved up in the last three or so weeks, the value of everything else is also beginning to like slowly rise as well. There is a lot of NFT news popping up again. There's a lot of NFT buying. There's a lot of NFT speculation. I see things as well. I'm not sure if other people look through the numbers as often as I do. But even on Vivi, things that I, I purchased... Because once again, when I, when I was telling everyone I was buying for like two, three dollars per thing, some of these things are now like twenty eight dollars as like the, the lowest part. Other stuff I was buying for, I don't want to tell you prices, but things have doubled like in, in high numbers. And the the madness that comes from the having and that comes from prices rising, everything will rise. It's an everything rise rally. But we're already we're seeing stuff that we normally wouldn't see until the beginning of next year. This is what makes all of this very fascinating. This is all this pent up energy that's there, as everybody wants to make a huge amount of money. Uh, Bitcoin NFTs, otherwise known as inscriptions, uh, have begun to pump and skyrocket once again. Not only in price, but also the amount that are actually being made. We had news a couple of days ago that the I, I think they crossed. I think it was. 100,000 were made in one day. I believe that was the number, which is, you know, quite insane for a blockchain that only does three transactions per second. 100,000 being made. Uh, recently, uh, 400,000 just happened. And this is why, because every single NFT is written or is on top of a Satoshi that basically as another 400,000 transactions that are pumping through the market. And the network is getting congested once again as it was towards the beginning of this year. There's also like other uh, Bitcoin NFT news and their prices and stuff like that, but I don't have it in here. It's more of a, uh, we're beginning to see like the craziness of a bull run before we even hit any crazy numbers. And it's happening across the board. All the markets within our space are beginning to do the exact same thing. I, I'm telling you, this is, I have, I have a couple of friends. So I have, I have, I want to say around 10 friends who are into the market, but I have two friends, hello, who are like really into the market. And we meet up all the time and we talk about prices and we talk about things. The, it's not even predictions. The idea that we have for this bull run, I think things are going to get really insane and I don't think people are ready for it. Like I think people think that they're ready for it, but I think a lot. I think so much, and I don't care for the term wealth per se, but I think the amount of wealth creation I think is going to actually make people go into a frenzy. A lot of times before in the past, when I this was even before I told these people to get into the market, and I knew other people when I used to go to conventions and things like that, and we used to talk about like it was more open back then. 
like how many coins people had and what they were doing and so and so and so. And I would keep in contact with these people. And there were a lot of times where I knew that this is not financial advice. It's more of I'm telling you a story. I know a bunch of people who had maybe only, air quotes, only put around five to 10,000 into the market. But at some point they had made around $750,000 and like, it kind of boggles the mind because you don't know what to do with all this newfound wealth. You don't know what to do with all this money. Like you kind of sit there and go, what do I do? There's, this, is, this is years ago. I, I told this story a long time ago. There was a party that I went to. It was like a, it was a really weird like bougie kind of thing. You had to like pay to get into like this weird exclusive meeting club with other entrepreneurs. And I went because I had another friend who really wanted to like, like rub shoulders with these people, rub elbows, rub something with all these people. And there was a guy who I ran into and we were we were just talking, standing in the corner. We were both like not really in the mood to be there. So we kind of like spoke to each other. And he was telling me about like the cryptocurrency market and stuff like that. And I kind of played, I was like, oh, crypto what? What is that? Because I, I get tired of having these conversations with like random people. And he was telling me, he's like, yeah, my friend, um, he's like, I didn't hear from him for a long time and I didn't understand what he was saying. I was like, okay, I don't care about you not hearing from your friend. He told me that his friend had put money into Bitcoin years and years ago and had basically forgotten about it. And then at some point, the guy was like, oh my gosh, yeah, I, I, I definitely think I have some Bitcoin and checked his old computer. And I think he had like $7 million worth of Bitcoin. And he said that this, him and his friend used to talk all the time and then the friend kind of disappeared. So he kept on calling and went to his house at some point and was like, dude, are you okay? What happened? And his friend told him, he was like, I opened up my computer. And the, 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 the thing about it was is that this guy's friend, the, the, so the guy who I'm talking to, his friend, he said he lived like a normal life. This was someone like from the countryside. He didn't, you know, he, he wasn't poor, but he lived normally he, on like on a basis. And he was like opening up his computer and seeing that basically he never had to work again was such a huge shock to his system that he just kind of like sat in his house for days and didn't want to talk to anyone because his brain had to process it. And it happens every single bull run. Every single bull run, there's always this situation where a lot of people get into the market. It's the same exact thing, once again, going back to, to Vivi. It's, it's, it's almost this like really quick, instantaneous kind of thing. For those of you who weren't into Vivi back in 2021, even like towards the beginning of 2021, one of the first things that launched on there as an NFT was Amazing Spider-Man number one. And I remember me and my friends were like, oh my gosh, this is really cool. And I think I bought like three or four of them because I was like, oh yeah, this is really cool to have. But what I didn't buy was the secret rare version of the comic. They're like, they came in different rarities, but the secret rare one, I think at that point was around like, Three or four hundred dollars or something like that. And the crazy part is, is that that comic, I believe, went up to fifteen or twenty thousand dollars, like just for the secret rare one. And me and my friends sat there because there were a lot of people who were on Twitter at that time who were talking about Vivi, who were buying up everything. They were buying up all the Batman statues, they were buying up uh, the secret rares, they were buying up all the golden moments and stuff like that. And from around if you basically, if you had put in four thousand in into Vivi and just bought that one comic, you would have made over a hundred k, and that does something to the mind because you kind of realize like what the possibilities are for the entirety of this market. And there have been a lot of people here, like I I've seen your messages, I've seen your things on Twitter, who've been buying crypto for years and buying stuff on Vivi for years. I don't think people know what's coming. I, I think it's going to shock a lot of people when they see how much money that they have and like what they can do with it. And it's going to change your brain chemistry in some sort of way, not in a negative way, but it's going to, uh, yeah, you'll realize uh, what you have and how life changing that it actually is just because you were in this market. It, it had nothing to do directly or explicitly with you going to work or like doing something, you know. That, where you were toiling all the time, like this was simply made online and you are now, as they say, in the money. Yeah. Um, so for those of you not looking at the screen, um, Bitcoin has actually overtaken Ethereum <coughs> in NFT sales, which is which is not a thing. Like Ethereum has dominated NFT sales for as long as NFTs have been a thing. 
and overnight, overnight, Bitcoin overtook Ethereum for the most NFT sales. Um, completely wild, completely, completely insane. But it's it's so, last point and then we'll move on. It's so nice to see the market reacting to reality because there's nothing more frustrating than going over news every day and the news being spectacular and seeing prices go down or moving sideways to see that all this is happening is very i mean i'm i'm personally i'm personally ecstatic yeah bitcoin has officially overtaken ethereum for nft sales that's something i ethereum is the most used blockchain on the planet i i did not did not see that coming at all um yeah at the moment, Bitcoin is up by 4%. It is at 36,762. Ethereum's at 1,900. We had, uh, can Ether go over $1,800 news for so long, dude? It was just so frustrating. A lot of you might have remembered the last couple of weeks, the news was constantly, Ethereum has to go over 1,800. Can Ethereum break 1,800? If Ethereum goes over 1,800, 2,000's in play. And it's like, yes, that's how numbers work. If it goes up, then it goes up. Ethereum's at 1,916, 2,000 seems all but inevitable. It's just a matter of it actually doing it. XRP is up by 2.9%. Solana continues to pump and I have... Cardano is up by 5%. Tron is up by 2. Chainlink is up by 8.9. Matic is up by 5.5%. Anything else crazy? Shiba Inu is up by 39 Avalanche, ironically, is up by four. OKB is up by 9%, but also with only $49 million trading volume. Cosmos is up by 1.8. Filecoin is up by 6.5. Something called Caspa, K-A-S-P-A, is up by 24%. Also relatively low trading volume that could be manipulated, but alas, whatever that project might be. Aptos is up by three. Ave is up by eight. Quant is up by 7.2. Uh, Rune Thor Chain is up by 7% as well. There's so much desperation right now around Bitcoin Cash Satoshi's vision. Um, just because that coin is actually being de delisted from a number of crypto exchanges right now. The trading volume is incredibly weak, but they're trying to consistently. I keep seeing articles who are clearly being paid. Articles talking about, no, this is the real Bitcoin, and it's like, it's not. BSV was never the real Bitcoin. And shout out to everyone out there who listened to me years ago that this was clearly a scam. Stacks is up by exactly 5% as well. Very interesting times ahead. Um, I assume as the day goes on and everyone wakes up and figures out that we are in this like eight-day time period where we could... Get a Bitcoin ETF. Prices may also continue rising just off of the actual excitement. I do sincerely hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening. Wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be, I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly... Be talking to you all soon. See you.